Let's see, that's a traffic ticket. That's not going to work. <laughs> I did pay it, though. Uh, but anyway, uh, I want to thank all of our Texas Roadhouse folks that are here and around the country that really uh, try to make me look good, I guess. And uh, some, there's a lot of young folks I see out here, and I used to be a KFC person until I got in trouble. I was doing my own chicken fingers, chicken sandwiches at, uh, in 1990 in Charlotte, so uh, I was told maybe it wasn't the place for me because I was uh, thinking outside of the box and getting in trouble. Then I was at Bennigan's and I was making a potato scoop, soup from scratch, got in trouble there. So I figured I better uh, work for myself or I'm gonna get fired several more times, I guess. So I finally worked out at Texas Roadhouse. So anyway, uh, thanks Nation's Restaurant News and uh, thank you all for uh, being there. And Jimmy John. So not only are you CEO and founder of Texas Roadhouse, you're really the, a true entrepreneur and, and maybe the one true entrepreneur actually up on this stage. Um, talk to us about what that means. I mean, you started a concept on the back of a napkin. You went through a ridiculous financing journey where you right, were rejected. Right. A lot you know, of rejection. A hundred times. Yeah, and when I was in college, I would ask girls here. to dance and they would turn me down at bars. So I was used to rejection. You're used to so, it. Yeah. Nice, nice. So it made it a little bit easier? Yeah, yeah, I practiced at it. <laughs> so what does it take to have a true entrepreneurial spirit? I think you typically just don't fit in other companies um, and uh, because you want to do things your own way. And uh, so eventually you get smart enough to figure out you better try something on your own because you're not going to last very long in all these other companies. That you was my trail. You yeah. didn't last. How long did you last at uh, Bennigan's? Uh, I think I was good there. Uh, I got turned down by uh, Bennigan's for some of these ideas, actually. They said, no, that's not going to work. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, um, uh, and then uh, I think at, at KFC, I was breaking the rules, doing some things. So I got in trouble there as well. So I, I figured I better start my own thing. <laughs> so. Do you get in trouble with yourself? <laughs> What's that? Do you get in trouble with yourself now? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do things and uh, I'll look in the mirror and go, what the hell's wrong with you? I, pick, I approve all of our sites, so when a site doesn't work, I can blame myself. Nice, that's good, that's good. So we haven't talked a lot about food here yet today, which is the hallmark of what we do, well, what you do, <laughs> and what I eat. Um, and Texas Roadhouse is really known for its, you know, its fresh baked bread, right? It's scratch cooking. That's hard to do today from a cost perspective, ops perspective. What kind of commitment does that take and how do you instill that through the organization? Yeah, we, have, we have meat cutters in every restaurant and then uh, for every eight to 10 stores, we have a product coach which just focuses on food and we've just recently added a service coach for every eight to 10 stores focusing on service. And so we wanna dial in as tight as we can on every aspect uh, of doing legendary food from scratch. And the customers love it? Hopefully. Yeah. Well, and your dinner only, right? And so yeah, that that's helps. Correct. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't like I like lettuce. You know, I love lettuce, and so I want to make it at four o'clock before we open. I don't want to make it ten in the morning. That would be lettuce abuse and having it set out all day. <laughs> so I can't do that. Lettuce abuse. That's right. <laughs> I love it. So beyond the food, you also we talked about culture. All of us did. But Texas Roadhouse has an extremely unique culture. But also from a from a business perspective, you know your your GMs and owners are part of the business. That that is correct. So what, if you uh, run a store, yeah, you have to pay us twenty five thousand uh, dollars for the opportunity to run a store and get ten percent of profits. If you're an area manager, you have to pay us fifty thousand dollars, and you have eight uh, percent of the uh, profits of all the stores you oversee. So they're true partners, and they have to sign a five year commitment in one location. So I don't move them from here to here. I want them to become uh, embedded into their community. So how, how do you do that? How do you find those people? And then how do you, is that part of the culture building that you want to see? It's not hard to find them. They're lined up wanting to join, actually. <laughs> well, for you now. Oh, yeah. At the beginning. <laughs> in at the, the beginning, beginning. <laughs> no, it was tough in the beginning because uh, we weren't well known and people had to take a chance. But you find those people that maybe didn't fit so well in other companies that wanted to take the risk. And, uh, and be their own, like, like an area manager for us, or uh, we call them market partners. It's like they're running their own company, and we give them a lot of autonomy uh, to, do, to run their, uh, their own brand, I guess. In casual dining, it's been a tough environment, not, not for you. And your growth well, Beef costs been... are very tough right now, so I think it's tough for everybody. Yeah. Here, Everyone, so. yeah. We'll talk about that. What are you doing to, to help that? Different cuts, pricing? No, no, we uh, are just trying to dial in tighter in the meat room, ask our uh, managing partners to get in the meat room and make sure we have less waste. 
Oh, that's smart. Uh, things like that. Yeah. And then we might, we might promote some of the items that have lower food costs. All right. Growth. What does growth look like for Texas Roadhouse? Uh, we're still growing 28 to 30 in domestically a year. Uh, we uh, are just getting ready to open in uh, Philippines and Taiwan. Uh, we're in the Middle East. Uh, and then we're looking at some other countries as well. Uh, South America, Brazil specifically. So your team was ready to party last night. Yep, it was they're awesome. always ready to party. It was awesome. <laughs> I don't know how many are here this morning. <laughs> I, I see some of them over there. They're, uh, they have sunglasses on, I think. How do you how do you stay accessible? Do you know to to the unit level? Are you traveling all the time? Uh, yeah, I travel all the time. They they have, everybody's got my phone number, so if they want to ask me something, they phone me because I'm not very good at email. <laughs> so I like to talk to them anyway. Uh, You're good on the phone. I'm good on a good phone. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again and congratulations again. Thanks. It was fantastic. Yeah.